Okay, Mayor, do you want to start our meeting? All right. Well, thank you, Susan. Well, we certainly want to welcome everyone to the Vinton Town Council meeting for this uh, Tuesday, February the 16th. I uh, hope everyone is feeling uh, feeling good. Uh, Susan, uh, do you want to read, uh, pardon me, do the uh, roll call and, of course, the required announcements, please? All right. Roll call for council. Councilmember Lyles. Here. Councilmember Mullins. Here. Councilmember Stovall. Here. Vice Mayor McCarty. Here. Mayor Gross. Here. We do have a quorum of council. Town staff that are present, Pete Peters, Susan Johnson, Ann Cantrell, Chief Drummond, Nathan McClung, and Anita McMillan. Also present, Jeremy Carroll, our town attorney, Debbie Adams with the Benton Messenger, Ken Fay, the Roanoke County Director of Real Estate Valuation, and Courtney Rogers with Davenport and Company. I would like to confirm that our meeting is being held in accordance with town ordinance number 1016 and section 4-0.01G of chapter 1289 of the 2020 acts of the Virginia General Assembly and everyone present is participating by electronic means. Mayor, the meeting is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Again, I certainly wanna welcome everyone. And we'll move on to our moment of silence. Uh, we use a moment of silence, silence here at the uh, Benton um, Council meeting so that everyone can pray or meditate as they see fit. Uh, during that time, I'll be praying and I hope you will. And I hope you will keep this community and this country and certainly this council meeting in your thoughts and prayers. While we're standing, uh, we'll, as per usual, we'll ask uh, Council Member Lyles to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, that will be uh, right after I close the uh, moment of silence. So I'll ask you to stand for those two items, please. Thank you, Heavenly Father, uh, for the country in which we live and the community. And uh, Father, we just pray that you'll uh, guide and protect us through the meeting tonight and just uh, ask for your continued blessings on our country and our community. For it's in his name we pray. Keith, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, folks. I appreciate you standing for that. Actually, I just wanted to check and see if uh, Mike had his pajamas on or not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're good to bottoms. go. No, I got the bottoms on. I got a shirt okay. on over top of the bottoms. <laughs> That's good. That's good, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, with that, we'll move uh, on to the community events. Our vice mayor usually has a list. I hope you have something for tonight. Uh, we do. Thanks to good. Pete, who always helps me out. Uh, the Roanoke County Restaurant Week is this week, and there are some Vinton restaurants that are participating. I know that Farm Bagasa is for sure. I've seen that on Facebook. They are partnering with the uh, Benton Chamber of Commerce, the Salem Roanoke County Chamber of Commerce, and the Roanoke Regional Chamber of Commerce. So, lots of folks joining um, for Restaurant Week, and we hope that uh, you guys write down every restaurant that we have now in Benton, which is going to take you a little while. Yeah. Start at the top and go down through there and try to get in. It's a good problem when you can't get in. <laughs> right. We definitely want to support these restaurants, but that's all I have right now, unless um, someone else has something. Okay. Anyone else have any announcements this evening? I'll just add that Restaurant Week runs through the 28th of the month. Um, so there, there's the rest of this week and next. Um, and there are um, um, 
I believe, five, ten dollar, twenty dollar uh, option. Cool. Sounds great. Sounds great. And we do have a growing uh, list, a growing variety of uh, restaurants here in Benton. So we are really blessed in that area, that's for sure. Any other announcements? All right, we'll uh, move on to the next item. It's a request to uh, postpone or change uh, anything on the agenda. Council, we have anything? All right, hearing none, we will move on to the consent agenda. And uh, tonight it uh, contains a couple of items, uh, approval of the minutes of the January 19th meeting, as well as adoption of a resolution uh, involving the uh, $4,133 um, calls for, uh, for installation of a concrete driveway. Any uh, objections, any changes or additions? So move, the, so move the consent agenda. Great. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Susan, I think that was uh, Councilman Stovall that made the motion and second by Councilman Lyles, I believe. I mean, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. All right. I uh, don't see uh, anything under awards. Uh, Susan, did you receive any comments or petitions in your office since the last meeting? No, no request to speak tonight, Mayor. Okay. Jeremy, always good to see you and your sporty looking tie. I don't see anything listed on the agenda. I guess that's a good thing, right? That is, Mr. Mayor. Nothing this evening. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So with that, I will uh, turn it over to our town manager for his section. Well, thank you, Mayor Gross, and um, uh, good to see uh, each and every one of you this evening. Um, the first, we have two items uh, under the town manager section tonight under briefings. Uh, the first being um, with Ms., uh, Mr. Ken Fay with Roanoke County Real Estate Valuation uh, on the Roanoke, uh, 2021 Roanoke County Real Estate Assessment. I'll turn it over to me, uh, Mr. Fay. Thank you. Hello, Ken. It's all yours, my friend. Righty. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the town council. Um, <clears throat> are you seeing my screen? I'm seeing you. Okay. <laughs> Let me hit the share screen here. Okay. Ah, there you go. All righty. Okay, I'm here to present the uh, 2021 real estate reassessment for the town of Benton. Uh, each year we do a reassessment uh, based on sales that occur in a previous year. Uh, the effective date of the assessment is uh, January 1. Um, so we look at sales that occurred in uh, 2020. Uh, we also look at the sales that occurred in 2019 um, with the effective date as January 1st, 2021. We generally concentrate on sales that occurred um, up until that uh, date of assessment. Uh, <clears throat> Here we have the uh, 2020 assessed value with the new 2021 assessed value. Uh, showing a change of, uh, to the positive of 23 million, 28,000 for a uh, percent increase in our residential category of 5.73%. Um, commercial is at 1.8% for an overall increase at 4.91%. Uh, um, <clears throat> a breakdown of uh, what the assessment increase is attributed to uh, new construction was 0.06%, and the bulk of the increase coming in market value, and that was uh, 24654000 or 4.85%, and the overall 4.91% increase. This slide is uh, just showing the breakdown of where the uh, increases were. 
um, most of it in the 6.25 percent in the single family. Um, we also have uh, 4.3 in the single family suburban, 4.4 for the multifamily, and 1.8 percent increase in our commercial. This is a breakdown of the last um, 10 years of the median sales price. The median sales price is the, that number where you have the same amount of sales below as the amount above. And for this is for Roanoke County, um, <clears throat> the median sale price for residential properties increased from 215,000 to 235,000. <clears throat> this year is a town of Vinton um, showing the median sale price of single family residential in the last 10 years showing increases. And uh, this year we see quite an increase there from 150,000 to 169,000, uh, which amounts to about 12.7% uh, increase in our median price. <clears throat> this is the number of sales uh, that occur each year. This is qualified sales, sales considered to be arm's length transactions. Um, this is for Roanoke County uh, for the last 10 years. You can see uh, this past year, 2020, there were 1,349 sales, qualified sales. Um, <clears throat> we also include here the, the red line is the uh, number of foreclosures, and you can see they have uh, decreased quite a bit in the, in the last uh, couple of years here. This is for the town of Benton, um, going back the last uh, nine years, uh, showing the number of sales have certainly increased in the last three years, uh, this year being 114 qualified sales. And then uh, you can see also here that the number of foreclosure sales have gone down. Uh, this year, we're only showing two. Um, that might be, um, even though it's good news that it's less, a lot of that uh, would be attributed to the forbearance programs that the government has um, put forth in order to people from being um, foreclosed on during the pandemic. Uh, so we only had two, and those were the beginning of the year before the forbearance laws took effect. So for uh, 2021, we, uh, these are our important dates. The assessment notices were mailed out December 31st to be received by the residents the first week of January. Uh, the informal appeals were held from January 11th through the 20th. Uh, the formal appeals through our Board of Equalization, dates are April 29th, July 29th, and October 28th. Uh, the final deadline to apply for an appeal is September 13th. And you can call our office for any um, questions or, uh, or if you'd wish to file an appeal. Uh, <clears throat> we always like to um, <clears throat> remind in our uh, presentations here the, of the Disability Veterans Property Tax Exemption Program. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, administered through our Commissioner of Revenues Office and you can always contact there for the details. Um, <clears throat> along with our Veterans Property Exemption is a tax freeze program for the elderly and disabled. Uh, the criteria would be disabled or over age of 65 with a combined income of less than 56,566 and net assets not to exceed 200,000. Again, you can contact the Commission of Revenue if you should have any questions about that program. And that's it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Well, Ken, thank you very much. Uh, uh, to me, it sounds like a very encouraging report. And uh, I have to confess, I know very little about real estate. Of course, we all understand that these good rates are driving the market nowadays. And I understand that. But still, 
uh, even taking that into account of when I look at how the assessments has gone up compared to, well, basically no inflation, 12.7%, I think you said, that, that means real estate invention is a good investment, I would say, or has been. You know? So I, I find that very encouraging. Yeah, the two factors that are driving that are, like you mentioned, the low interest rates and also the um, limited number of supply. Um, yeah. Yeah. With the limited supply, it certainly drives prices. So the combination of those two factors um, held strong throughout the year, even considering the pandemic. Yeah. So, so I guess the answer to kind of connect that to the mayor, I guess, you know, well, actually, one of the questions that I was asked by a um, citizen that and, and what is round that to four five percent. So I guess that's that's the answer is is that during a, during the pandemic of COVID, we see a five percent increase in in real estate assessment. That you contribute that to the fact of the sales. So you contribute that to. That's correct. All, our assessments are always based on market data, um, particularly in the residential sector, and that's where we saw the largest increase. Um, uh, the countywide increase was uh, 3.68%. So um, Fitton outperformed the county in its values. And, and a lot of that was um, with the limited inventory throughout the county, it was particularly true in, in the town of Benton. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. That's, uh, uh, we've seen a couple of houses in our neighborhood sell on like two days or stuff like that. So they don't stay on the market long. It's awesome. All right. Thank you, Ken, very much for that great report. Uh, any other questions for Ken? Susan, did you want to add uh, a comment to that? Yes. Um, for the record, I just want to let council know that uh, according to our budget calendar, we are set to conduct the public hearing on our tax rates on April the 6th. And pursuant to uh, state code, any assessment that has an increase of more than 1% requires that our notice of public hearing has to be advertised 30 days prior to our public hearing. So um, I will have to send that to the Benton Messenger before our next meeting. So it will run on March the 4th. So I just wanted to let council be aware that we will be doing the required 30 day notice. Okay, great. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, again, thank you, Ken. So Pete, I guess back to you, my friend. Okay, uh, Ken, thank you for the presentation. Appreciate your time. Um, um, Mr. Mayor, the next item this evening is a, um, an item uh, to bring before council regarding a recommendation to issue an RFP for debt financing for some uh, utility projects uh, in our utility department. And I will uh, turn it over to Ms. Ann Cantrell to provide this introduction. Good evening, Mayor and members of council. Um, you will remember that we've briefed before on some of the projects that we've been working on in the finance department and utility department. And one of those includes um, the utility program, also doing some well sites and a third street sewer lift station. So we actually have Courtney here to talk about the funding piece of it. They provided the rate analysis for us in 2019 that council adopted. And he has some really good information for you. Very excited. Courtney, thank you. Thank you, Ann. Everybody hear me okay? You bet. Good evening. Good evening. Unusual times. Uh, I think I've done more Zoom meetings than, uh, than I have in-person meetings over the last year, but uh, hopefully that's coming to an end here shortly. Um, what I'd like to do uh, is, is, is step back in time. Ann mentioned we were back in, I guess, a year and a half ago, July of 2019, the last time we, we talked um, about rates. And as you might recall, as part of that, we did a multi-year rate increase plan um, in January of last year you adopted the first phase and the second phase took, took effect in July. As a part of that we increased the, uh, the minimum service charges by eight percent and then the consumption rates by six and that was the same plan um, that would uh, basically be put in place for 22 and for 23 and then after that we would come back and, and look at it again. Of course one of the things that um, 
that uh, I call it the flying new ointment was uh, the Cardinal Glass when they began recycling water that uh, took a hit on the revenues um, of the system. Based on what we see, and I'll go through it here in just a moment, it looks like that, um, that the increase that we did back in January 2020 was timely because it basically helped um, overcome the, the revenue losses that we had because of, of uh, them recycling their water. So um, we may be slightly behind because of that, but I think that's something we will keep an eye on um, and, and may, you know, if we have to, it'll be something we catch up in 24, 25. Just uh, for those uh, in the audience who may not be familiar, um, one of the reasons that we did this rate increase was to take on the project we're going to talk about tonight because we knew that we had to, uh, to do some, some financing in order to take care of that. Because the system runs very well in terms of revenues paying for operational revenues paying for uh, operations. But when you, when you have capital needs that uh, are over and above the cash that you have on hand, we've had to go back and do rate increases. And I know that was true back in 2014, 15, and 16 as well. That was when we borrowed a couple million dollars back in 2013, and those rate increases took care of that. Just a quick uh, looking back over the last five years, um, so far the numbers have worked out pretty well. Um, at the end of the day, we've been able to add to fund balance. You might recall back when we, uh, for those of you who might remember what we talked way back in 2013, uh, we had very little cash back then. And one of the goals was to build cash up a recommended floor was 180 days, basically be able to operate uh, for six months if basically no revenues came in. And then uh, with, a, with a target top end of 270 days. And you can see that we, uh, in 2017, we got above the 180 and we've been working toward that 270 number and are, are very close. Um, some may ask, why do we need that, that money? Well, that's, you know, if you have a, an emergency, we need to have some funds on hand to be able to take care of that. Um, if uh, a, a water main breaks and you all of a sudden need to do some repairs, um, you need to have some dollars on hand to take care of things like that. And so that's, that's really why we set those, uh, those numbers the way they are. When we look at uh, and kind of hone in on 2020, we looked at the budget versus actual. And this kind of goes back to my point earlier. When you look at the water and the sewer billings, we were real close uh, in terms of the way where you set your budget to the actual revenues. Um, I, I'll call that basically a break even. Um, and that was in spite of Cardinal Glass. So that's when I say that the increases, we were hoping to have a little more, but with Cardinal Glass, things didn't come out quite the way we wanted them to. But at the end of the day, we still ended up with a positive number after capital outlay, after paying for some pay capital, we were still able to add to uh, fund balance and again get a little bit higher and getting close to that 270 number. On the uh, expenditure side, we only had one large blip. That was a uh, VRS uh, retirement contribution that wasn't in the budget. Um, but outside of that, everything did very, very well. So as we think about the upcoming capital needs, I'll say this that uh, at the moment, at least interest rates are very good. I, I, of course, just talking about uh, low interest rates have helped on the on your uh, reassessments and such values, um, tax exempt rates, municipal tax exempt rates, other than a little blip that we went through last March when the pandemic hit, um, rates have been very good. Um, under under 2%, as you can see, when you look out at uh, rates that go out as far as 30 years. When you look at uh, this chart shows us two things. The solid line is the yield curve, basically showing kind of where interest rates are from year one out to year 30. And the percentages show the, the amount of time that rates have been lower, which is almost, we're almost at the very bottom. The very bottom took place uh, back in early August last year, where we really hit the bottom, but, um, but we're, real, we're very near that. For those of you who follow financial news may have noticed the 10-year treasury jump today um, with the, uh, the announcement over the weekend of uh, um, the, the president's couple, almost $2 trillion plan I think folks are starting to think inflation. Um, and so we saw the treasury yield jump up. So uh, our discussion tonight comes at a timely, in a timely manner, we need to get this RFP out and get the bids back before rates uh, start jumping up on us. So the projects that, uh, that, that Ann mentioned a little bit earlier, um, the upgraded meter system, the uh, third street sewer lift and the, and the SCADA upgrade, total about $4.4 million. Um, what we did was uh, we, we talked about 
the, uh, the average life of these systems um, and decided that 10 years was what we wanted to look at in terms of borrowing the, uh, the, the, the amount over. So we put that in our model. Um, one, you also know that built into the model is another million dollars of PAYGO. So we're not assuming we're borrowing everything. There is some dollars in the budget for your normal capital that goes on uh, over the next six years, totaling almost a million dollars. Um, before we get into the pro forma, just talking about the borrowing options. Um, when we start thinking about kind of where we are with interest rates, uh, the size of the transaction, and, and particularly in this case, the amortization term, only going out 10 years, um, and then trying to, from a timely standpoint, getting this back very quickly, our thought is to go out and, and do this in what we call a direct bank loan uh, request for proposals. <clears throat> Excuse me. We will send out a request for proposals, have it come back on March 10th, and then bring it back to you for approval. We can show you all the various um, responses that we got and then have a recommendation for you to, to basically uh, adopt and move forward with a, uh, a resolution that would enable us to go and actually uh, finalize that loan. We could go to VRA, but waiting for VRA basically means we'd have to wait till almost the middle of May. And with um, the talk in the market about rates starting to kind of creep up on us, uh, our thought is let's go lock in rates now and not wait until uh, the middle of May when things could be higher. They could be lower, but uh, there just seems to be an awful lot of pressure on rates right now with the with the uh, pandemic uh, vaccine discussion and, and people thinking that we're gonna come out of this and the market's gonna be stronger. Um, there's a lot of talk and, uh, of, of the long end of the yield curve popping up. You, you probably hear about short-term rates not moving and that's probably true in the first four or five years, but that's really overnight rates and very, very short rates. Uh, when, we, when we go out into the five to 10 year and longer period, we're definitely starting to see rates uh, low pressure. Um, so some of the, the characteristics of a direct bank loan, uh, essentially, we would send that out, but in no way does this mean that you have to move forward. We can tell all the bidders, if you all say, no, nope, we don't want to do this, um, we basically tell them thanks, but no thanks. Um, one of the things that we'll be able to do is, uh, is, is get some options from them. Um, we are going to uh, mention uh, now, but I'm going to talk about it again later. We're going to also look at possibly refinancing some of your existing debt. And if the rates come back good enough, we may, uh, in fact, be able to, to save some money there. Um, and so that's something we're going to, to try to do as a, as a part of this as well. Um, one of the things that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that is a benefit here of doing a bank loan is that we can do it very quickly um, in the 30 to 45 day range. And so that's something that uh, is beneficial here again because of timeliness of where rates are at the moment. So as we were looking at uh, putting it in our pro forma, we, we assumed a 10-year loan at 2%. We're hoping that that rate comes in lower, um, but we want to be conservative with the rate. We're, we're seeing rates lower than that, and hopefully that will be the case when, when, uh, when, the, when the responses come back in. Um, and so what we did is we put that into the model to see how it would line up with the revenues and expenditures um, that, uh, that we've been projecting forward. As we look at that 2%, essentially what that's gonna mean, and I know these are very small, but essentially we've got the three different projects broken out if you wanted to see the debt service on each one of those. But at 2%, we can get in under 2%, we'll be under $500,000 per year in terms of paying this loan back. And when we line that up with the existing debt service that you have on the system right now, um, you have 4.5 million, that uh, basically goes between now and 2033. Um, it's about $700,000 now and it declines over time um, and, and drops off in 2028, 29 to only 140,000. When you add our debt to this, uh, the, the proposed debt essentially will be about 1.2 million uh, for about three years and then it declines uh, along with the, uh, the existing debt. And that's what the, the chart would look like. So our assumptions as we were building the pro forma um, was a couple of things. We've got Western uh, Water has basically uh, told us that increase in sewage treatment costs are going to go up about 12%. Uh, we use 2% thereafter. Um, we assumed 2% for operating expenditures and capital outlay would 
to grow at that same level. We assumed constant usage levels. Obviously, if there's a dry year or wet year, um, that can, can affect revenues. We didn't try to take that into account here. Um, there was a reserve of contingencies in 2021. We took that out for the moment to, to, uh, to uh, we were afraid that that might skew things too much the wrong way. And essentially what, as I mentioned earlier, we might need a little bit in 24. It turns out we need the same level in 24 that we projected for 22 and 23 in terms of an 8% minimum and a 6% phi metric. But we're able to lower that in 25 and 26 and not need one in 27, looks like. We were able to go down 1% uh, in 25 and another 2% in 26. So without any other capital needs out there, um, hopefully this will do it and take care of these projects. And then of course, if we come in with lower interest rates, that might help as well. But we're not asking um, for you to act on those rates at this point. We just are projecting it. We would come back um, in a couple of years um, after we see a little bit more history of how the system is reacting to the rates that we put in place last July and last January. Um, and also of course the interest rates that we end up getting back. I circled here um, that we actually go into the red in, in terms of coverage in 22 and 23. What I didn't wanna do is have, uh, have us to have to go back and raise rates further than what we've already talked about in 22 and 23. And so we're not gonna meet the coverage and as you'll see in the line just below the red, that VML legal requirement is 120. We're not gonna, yeah, 1 1.20, we're not gonna get there. One of the things that we're gonna recommend is actually refinancing the VML VACO debt. We think we can save some money by reducing the interest rate. And as a double positive, we would actually get rid of that requirement. And so we don't have to meet that coverage. And we can go into our fund balance for that one year so that we don't have to increase rates uh, in 22 to, to basically uh, be able to take care of this debt service. So as a chart, which you'll see is again, the revenues being in blue, we actually uh, don't have enough in 22, but we're good for the other years. And then there's the coverage I spoke about. It actually takes us a couple of years to get back to that VML legal requirement. But once we get VML out of the way, we actually won't have a legal requirement, but we'll still have our recommended target. Because what that means is we're producing more revenues than we're expending on operations, which in turn helps us take care of any needed repairs and replacements the system's going to need. And then in terms of the day's cash on hand, it does take a dip, but it doesn't go below our policy. Um, and then we're able to build it back up toward the end of, of the projection period. So the takeaway is that um, based on our projections, um, we should be able to do this with some moderate increases out in the future. Hopefully things come in a little stronger and maybe we don't have to do that down the road, but we do wanna see what uh, system growth and usage over the next couple of years, how that affects things before we make a, a final determination. And as I mentioned, we're going to uh, dig a little further and look at all the various pieces of utility debt, as well as any potential town debt that we might be able to refinance. I, I mentioned the one VACO bond here that's, uh, we, we, we are gonna recommend, look, oops, sorry, I was trying to highlight. We are gonna recommend trying to take that one out. That gets us out of that, uh, that coverage. Then hopefully we can uh, save a little money at the same time. So again, one, just a, a quick evaluation that we've done, we may be able to save as much as $100,000 by refinancing some debt. So we're gonna see how much of that we can, we can take care of. So finally, just wrapping up here, our timeline is uh, if uh, you all give us the head nod tonight, we would uh, move forward with getting an RFP out tomorrow, get it back on the 10th. We'd like to give the banks about three weeks to, uh, to, uh, to get it back to us. So this is, this is pretty quick, but still uh, we'll be able to get it back on the 10th. Um, have some follow-up a couple of days after that, and then be able to make your next meeting uh, on March 16th, bring back um, uh, the request for proposals and, uh, and I think one of the things I'm not sure we actually talked about, we probably need to have a public hearing as well. So we probably need to get the notices out, work with Susan on that and, uh, and get, get a public, uh, public hearing set up for that day. Mr. Mayor, I'm ha happy to answer any questions. Okay, well, thank you very much. That was a great presentation and uh, 
Well, as far as my head nod goes, it sounds good to me. <laughs> Council? So uh, that's nothing that we have to take a vote on or anything this evening, just kind of give these uh, folks a go ahead. So uh, thank you very much. We, we certainly appreciate it. That all sounds good. Any questions or comments, Council? No? All right. Been a good plan. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, we're gonna try to get out there and lock in some rates before things get uh, get crazy on us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There you go. That's right. The mayor, I guess, just a consensus of council head nod for the record. Yep. Yeah. I see. Yes. Okay. Sounds great. We'll we'll get right on it. Thank you, everybody. Great. I don't Thank think you. that made Jeremy nervous. I'm not sure, but <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Courtney, thank you for your presentation this evening. Yes, sir. And Thanks, Anthony, everybody. thank you. Good night. Yes, thank you, Courtney. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have two items requiring action this evening. Um, the first I will ask Mr. Nathan McClung, the town's principal planner, to present, and this is regarding an amendment to uh, town code. Uh, Mr. McClung. Thanks, Pete. Uh, good evening, Mayor, uh, members of council. So, this is just a follow up to um, the, the briefing in a previous town meeting. This is uh, in reference to the way the town can enforce uh, provisions in our town code relating to the accumulation of trash and grass and weeds on our property. Specifically, uh, the two major changes would be uh, moving from a civil penalty to or moving from a um, civil penalty system. Um, as opposed to what the current process is with court being the final uh, end all be all if uh, someone remains non-compliant, which, uh, which also would allow, like I said, it would allow our community resource officer to impose fines on individuals found in violation. And then also another major provision is the ability for the town to not only charge the property owner, but also charge the occupant of, of the property. Um, and there are also some more nuanced changes uh, to this uh, section of the, of the town code. I'll share my screen with the PowerPoint from last time. I'll just quickly go through this. Um, so, the first major changes will relate to the definitions. This is just clearing up what is an owner, what is an occupant and also um, includes a definition for what a noxious weed uh, would be. Uh, just for reference, uh, in the town code section, everything that's vegetative that's in violation is called a weed, so even grass is a weed. Um, things that would be excluded would be trees, natural woodlands, um, maintained gardens, and ornamental shrubbery. Uh, I mean, we like to take a common sense approach to a lot of these things, so, but codifying in such a way um, I would keep people compliant. Um, this is the reason why we had to go through these definition section. Noxious weeds, we ordered this list, list previously. Um, it's based on the Virginia State Code, so we don't have to do that research. A horticulturist employed by the state government can do that and update that list every year, but it's good to have these noxious weeds included um, to outright ban them. There's no height requirement, just the mere existence of these is a violation. The owner occupant option, uh, as I was speaking about earlier, uh, the reason why this came about is because there was, we we're seeing major hurdles in enforcement uh, related to either negative landlord tenant relationships and very vague, uh, very vague lease agreements about property maintenance, um, out of state property owners that are hard to reach or people with, or landlords or property owners that are guarded by an LLC that's uh, difficult to contact, and also just absentee landlords or property management groups. And sometimes absentee landlords can relate to um, even a, a death, which causes issues as well, um, even beyond this ordinance. Um, but this would allow for the not only the property to be decided, but also the tenant to be decided. And this will be done by the discretion of the enforcement official. The code enforcement uh, would transition into a civil penalty system. So we'd, if a violation was found on the property relating to trash or grass, uh, they would first be notified. 
Um, and then if they continue in non-compliance, there's a, a set of language about fines with associated dollar amounts to be imposed on the property owner or the, or the occupant. Uh, hopefully these civil penalties will eventually bring about compliance and no court hearing would be required, but there is language in there that would allow for a uh, court hearing to proceed if compliance is never met. The, the current process, we get stuck in a loop. Um, if someone chooses to not be, not be compliant, uh, the only, since there's no fines, really the courts are the only deciding factor and uh, you can get stuck in, in a loop that lasts for months or even years before compliance is, is brought. Additionally, there's the natural vegetation provision. Um, and this would uh, help protect, as I was talking about earlier about common sense, uh, there's some larger properties that are, first of all, wooded, but then even uh, larger properties, uh, usually away from some of the more dense neighborhoods. Um, and this would allow for an exception where if a property is an acre or more, um, that uh, any natural vegetation growing more than 50 feet from every property line should not, would not constitute a violation of this article. And pending your questions, uh, that's all I have. And staff would uh, recommend that action to take, adopt this ordinance will be taken this evening. Okay. All right. Thank you, Nathan, very much for that presentation. Uh, of course, we've uh, received a briefing about this subject a little, well, I, I guess at the last meeting, if I recall. And so we've all seen it before, uh, seen the information before. Council, you have any uh, questions or comments? Anyone? No? Okay. Uh, well, Council, you have before you an ordinance uh, which would amend the code of the uh, Benton, uh, Benton Town Code as uh, described by Nathan. Uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt. Okay. We have a motion to adopt by Council Member Mullins. Excuse me, Mullins, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a second by, I think that was Council Member Stovall, wasn't it? No. Uh, no, no, no. You, know, you hear this crisp voice and get a confused with that other voice. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> All right. Any uh, any further questions or comments? I don't know if I should ask for any more comments or not. <laughs> Let's uh, on the roll, please. Councilmember Lyles? Yes. Councilmember Mullins? Yes. Councilmember Stovall? Yes. Vice Mayor McCarty? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Gross? Yes. All right, orders passes. Thank you, folks. Back to you, Pete. <laughs> thank you, Mayor Gross. Uh, thank you, Nathan, for that presentation. Um, the last item requiring action this evening, um, as you know, the uh, town will is planning to participate in the uh, visit Virginia's Blue Ridge Ironman 70.3, which is scheduled to be held June 6th of 2021. Um, and what I have before you this evening is a, a memorandum of understanding between participating localities um, of the city of Roanoke, uh, the counties of Botetourt and Roanoke, as well as the town of Benton. I want to thank um, our town attorney, Jeremy Carroll, for working on this with the organizations, um, others attorneys, as well as uh, the triathlon organization and visit Virginia's Blue Ridge. Um, but the essence of this MOU spells out um, the arrangement between the local governments um, and the triathlon host, the Ironman organization. Uh, it includes things such as liability protections for the local governments, as well as um, the reimbursement requirement for all um, directly um, outlaid expenses of the town or the other localities uh, um, and what we have to do to host this event. So uh, for the town's portion, uh, we have a, a stretch of the cycling that will take place in the town. So we have to provide for traffic control and public safety. Uh, primarily, our responsibility is uh, police in this case um, to close those uh, dedicated entrances into the public right of way uh, and protect the cyclists as they um, uh, pass through town. So we'll incur some overtime um, of our police officers for 
um, that event date. Um, and this uh, uh, understanding MOU provides for protections and then the reimbursements for those direct expenses. So um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to entertain those. Um, uh, otherwise, I would respectfully request uh, council to uh, consider taking action on this MOU this evening. Okay, Pete, thank you very much. We certainly appreciate that. Uh, council, you have any questions or comments? Okay, you have before your resolution uh, that would authorize the MOU as uh, Pete has described. Uh, here again, this is something uh, we're all pretty familiar with. It's kind of the second time around for this item. So uh, as I say, you have that resolution before you. Is there a motion? It is, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion. And I'll second. Okay, I believe that was Council Member Stovall this time. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> and uh, the Vice Mayor made the second. Uh, so if there are no other questions or comments, we will call for the roll. Council Member Lyles? Yes. Council Member Mullins? Yes. Council Member Stovall? Yes. Vice Mayor McCarty? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Gross? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council for that. Um, I just wanted to follow up on that. Uh, now that the agreements have pretty much been authorized by all the local governments, um, we will start proceeding into the next plan uh, planning phase of this event. Uh, we went through this exercise last year. We're going to call it the test run before COVID uh, canceled our plans. Um, so we have the uh, route mapped out. So we have our uh, protection plans in place and um, our backup plans and our backup to our backup plans in place. Um, but we will start um, um, a meeting with the community members, the stakeholder groups uh, uh, out in the community, particularly in Benton in our case, um, to make them aware of the impacts of this event date um, and how we can um, uh, communicate the variations of what roads will be closed and how folks can navigate around town through that morning. We anticipate the greatest impact um, for town residents and visitors that morning on June 6th to be between the hours of 8 a.m. and 12 noon. Uh, but that is, you know, that is not a definite time frame. It's just what we expect. And, and this organization, the Ironman organization, does have a very um, good handle on what they can anticipate of their 2,500 athletes that were participating in the event. Um, and there'll be um, well, well planned and we'll have everything covered, but we will start the next uh, piece of civic engagement um, with our stakeholder groups and our citizens. Um, and we'll certainly work through Debbie as well as other media outlets to communicate that. Great, great. Uh, under project updates and comments, just a couple of updates um, uh, this evening. I did want to mention that uh, we have made the decision in consultation with Mayor Gross um, that unfortunately uh, the state of the town address will have to be virtual this year. We did delay the uh, state of the town address from December um, to the March date in anticipation that hopefully things would have cleared up for COVID by that point. Um, but with the governor's uh, restrictions in place, we still don't feel like we can have that in person. So we will proceed with a um, virtual presentation similar to what the city of Roanoke and, and the county of Roanoke did back in um, the fall of the year. Um, so uh, RVTV is going to produce that um, event or production for us. So they will be working in the video and the, um, the photography and the presentation itself. And um, we have invited the chamber to participate um, as a part of the activity. And, and, and then our very own uh, Mayor Gross will do the primary narration of of the state of the town. So been working on that behind the scenes um, over the last couple of weeks and um, the next several weeks will be a much more ramped up uh, schedule uh, to produce that activity. And uh, we have tentatively scheduled it uh, to be released March 11th, but that again, because it's virtual, uh, we may uh, fluctuate that date slightly, but we'll certainly communicate that to council as well as media on the actual release date, but it, it will be virtual. Um, we'll do the appropriate press releases and social media posts and um, announcements of when that uh, presentation will be um, first posted and presented. Uh, but it will be uh, at will, so people can call it up at, at you know at their leisure, um, and we'll put it in appropriate places so that folks can find that fairly easily. So we're looking forward to taking a different approach with uh, with the presentation and utilizing uh, RBTV skill set and. and uh, 
technical te technical abilities that, that we certainly don't have in house in some cases. So while it's not in person, we lose some of that personal touch. We do expect a, a really great presentation um, um, this year. So I stay tuned for that. Uh, wanted to um, update uh, council on the Gishmill project. Um, uh, activities certainly ramping up in regards to the Gishmill project. We continually meet uh, with the different stakeholder groups, whether it be the DAVI development team, uh, DHR, IDHCD. There's a lot of moving pieces um, with this project. There's a lot of overlapping timelines and um, um, elected boards that need to be uh, briefed on the subject matter. So uh, we have drafted a lot of contracts and language to kind of guide us through this process over the next several months. Um, and it will be very complicated and you will not necessarily get tired of hearing about Gish's Mill, but you will hear <laughs> as much as you can uh, digest about the about the project over the next several months. So uh, uh, get your seatbelts ready. It's going to be a, a lot of information coming your way. Um, I want to uh, thank uh, Nathan McClung uh, for all his work on, on assisting with this project moving forward and certainly the development team um, and, and a lot of our staff. I mean, we all had a played a role in this and it's going to be exciting to see it come together over the next year and a half um, from starting construction in the next couple of months um, to hopefully opening and uh, celebrating another ribbon cutting in the town um, a year and a half or so away. So, uh, but that is progressing nicely. Um, the other item we just did receive and I'll share more detail as it becomes available, but we did receive notification from DHCD that we were unfortunately not selected for the housing rehabilitation grant. Um, we resubmitted that grant application. Uh, we have not had any feedback from DHCD quite yet, but we'll certainly do a follow-up um, and I will provide that um, content back to council. Um, and that's, that's perfectly okay. Sometimes you apply two or three times for a grant before you get it. Uh, it could be because we have a pending um, grant award from DHCD in process, uh, perhaps that could have played into it with the Gishmill and IRF project. Um, and I'm sure they want to uh, spread that love around the state um, as much as they can. So. Uh, we know, certainly want to be greedy in the town, and, and they have been very generous to us over the years with uh, grant funding. So uh, we'll um, um, evaluate where we can improve on that grant once again, and we, we certainly aren't going to give up, and we'll continue on the next grant application to resubmit. <clears throat> and the last item, I don't want to take too much of uh, Chief Drummond's uh, thunder here, but I did just want to make an announcement, and, and Chief Drummond will follow up at a future council meeting to make a proper introduction, but he has extended an offer to another employee, uh, another police officer, uh, Robert uh, Rao. Am I saying that right, Chief? Yes, sir, you are. Yes, yeah, so so we just want to welcome Robert to the family. And uh, again, we'll have a future uh, inter proper introduction uh, via Zoom, um, if not next council meeting, um, sometime in the near future. And I believe his, his swearing in ceremony will actually take place next Monday. So uh, I believe that gets us almost to full capacity, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe you have one more vacancy. That is correct, sir. Excellent. And uh, Mayor Gross, that concludes my uh, updates for this evening. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's a lot of great information. And uh, I and, uh, just briefly want to comment on the Ironman uh, race. I think it's uh, really exciting and I'm, I'm happy that we could be part of it here in the town of Benton. And I don't think it will cause uh, too much uh, disruption because it's been uh, well planned. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, and you're right, uh, we've, uh, we've done well with the grants. So uh, if uh, we miss one on occasion, that's not the end of the world because we do still have a shot at it. <laughs> So uh, we look forward to uh, the uh, third go around on that. So, yeah, that's a lot of uh, a lot of exciting news there, Pete. Thank you for that. Good report. All right. If, uh, if there are no other comments, we'll move on to the appointments uh, for the boards and commissions. And uh, the first one will be for the Board of Zoning Appeals. And uh, Vice Mayor McCarty, I understand that you have a motion concerning that. Uh, yes, I do. I make a motion that Megan Noga be appointed to complete the unexpired term of Justin Davis on the Board of Zoning Appeals beginning February the 16th, 2021 and ending June the 30th, 2022. And that Teresa Davis be appointed as an alternate 
to the Board of Zoning and Appeals for a five-year term beginning February the 16th, 2021 and end in February the 15th, 2026. Okay, thank you very much. Is there a uh, second uh, to that motion? I'll, I'll second. second. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Which one did you get there, Susan? I know we got a second. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter which one. Uh, hey, either one. Boring pay. All right, I'll put Mullins. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Is there any comment? Questions? If not, uh, Susan, do we call the roll on this or is this a board? We can do either way. All right, well, let's uh, make a roll call vote uh, okay. for the uh, motion uh, as right. presented by Vice Mayor. Please. Okay. Councilmember Lyles? Yes. Councilmember Mullins? Yes. Councilmember Stovall? Yes. Vice Mayor McCarty? Yes. Mayor Gross? Yes. Thank you very much. Congratulations to our uh, new nominees for the Board of Zoning Appeal. And uh, with that, we'll move on to the next item, which is a, uh, an appointment uh, for the Highway Safety Committee. And I understand that Councilmember Mullins has a motion. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I make a motion that Henry Cantrell, Wayne Guffey, Sarah Reed, and Craig Birch be reappointed to new three-year terms on the Highway Safety Committee beginning March 6th, 2021 and ending March 5th, 2024, and that Lee Minix be appointed to a three-year term beginning March 6th, 2021 and ending March 5th, 2024. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Laura. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Oh. Keith second that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Keith did that. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Susan, please call the roll. Councilmember Lyles? Yes. Councilmember Mullins? Yes. Councilmember Stovall? Yes. Vice Mayor McCarty? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Gross? Yes. All right. So that motion carries. We want to congratulate and uh, thank our members of the Highway uh, Safety Committee. Now, Susan and I wanted to uh, briefly comment. We still have a couple of uh, vacancies uh, for volunteers, and I'll let her uh, detail how you uh, go about applying for those. But, uh, you know, one of our vacancies is for RVTV. Susan's uh, already part of that committee, so again, she can tell you about that. And I believe the other one is that we still have an alternate position on the BZA. And uh, both these are, you know, committees that can be a lot of fun, particularly if you're interested in serving the community. So I would encourage uh, all of our citizens uh, that are interested to fill out the application and uh, get that into our town clerk. And of course, that can be found on the web page. Uh, Susan, did you want to uh, comment on the RV TV thing? Um, it's... Um... It's a great committee. Um, Council member uh, Mullins and I serve on that and um, a lot of good things going on with RVTV um, under the new leadership of Scott. And so um, if you wanna learn a lot about cable and production and how it's serving our region, be a good opportunity for someone. So lawyer, I either one would be glad to talk to someone and tell you about it if you're interested. Absolutely. Great. Great, great. Yeah, Laura, sorry, I uh, forgot to mention that you're on that committee, too. That's the whole thing about being on council, you end up on plenty of committees, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. But we appreciate you, sir. Okay, with that, uh, we'll move on to the uh, Finance Committee report. Uh, Finance Director Ann. Thank you. Okay, so my PowerPoint should be up. Can everybody see it? Yes. Great. So we recently met and we had several great discussions. Some of them we discussed earlier in our meeting tonight. One of them was an update on the debt financing status. So that was the presentation that Courtney gave earlier. 
We also talked about the budget resolution for the Bex Hill driveway apron that was passed on the consent agenda earlier tonight. We talked about the December 2020 financial statements and the fiscal year 22 budget update. And so moving right along and looking at our December 2020 financial statements, the picture is continuously looking better than we anticipated. So it's very good news here in Vinton. Revenues are at 117% of budget expectations and expenditures are at 94% of budget expectations in the general fund. So revenues are coming in high and expenditures are still staying below budget. In our grant fund, revenues are at 18% and expenditures are at 8%. This is mostly because of CARES funding that's been received and certain items that need to be moved around. Our utility fund is at 114% of its revenue budget and expenditures are at 101% of budget. We did discuss that the reason it's over budget currently is due to the timing of paving for utility cuts. We normally do that in the May timeframe. We actually did it in the fall, winter this year. So that's one reason the year to date is a little high for this time of year. The capital fund is at 100% and expenditures are at 313%. A lot of this is from public safety salary savings that we've shifted over to the capital fund, but that wasn't approved by council until January. So once we get that budget resolution posted, we should see a correction where that fund's not over budget. And then in the stormwater fund, you'll see revenues are at 100% and expenditures are at 89%. And then when we move to look at cash, you will see that general fund cash was just over 2 million. And then the grant fund had 250,000. The utility fund was at 1.2 million. The capital fund was at 210,000 and stormwater fund cash was at 86,000. So total cash across all of our funds, 3.8 million, almost 3.9 million are restricted funds. So these are items that we can only spend on certain things such as asset forfeiture. We're at 508,000. The police evidence fund is at 26,000. And then our general fund investments are at 2.3 million. Utility fund investments are at 980,000. Total investments at 3.3 million. And then altogether, we were at 7.2 million in cash and investments. And then one thing I do wanna note is during the committee, we pulled up a spreadsheet that I maintain that shows our cash balance throughout the years. And it's really amazing to see where we've come to where we are now. Just three years ago, we had negative cash in the general fund at this time of year. So to go from negative cash to 2 million is quite a feat. So some of the other items that we discussed, we touched on Davenport earlier today and also the budget resolution on Bex Hill driveway, but we also talked about our fiscal year 22 budget update. So we still have a few things to complete for the coming year. On March 5th, we have a council retreat where we can bring you up to speed on some proposed budget items. And then April 6th, we have our adoption of tax rates. May 18th, we can either hold a work session or a public hearing, depending on where council and staff feel they are with the budget. June 1st, we can either do a public hearing or budget adoption. And then June 15th would be the budget adoption if we felt that we needed to push it off to that date. And that is all I have. There's one action item for you tonight, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, and thank you very much for a great report. Council, do you have any questions or comments? Looks great, as usual. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess we need a uh, motion to approve the uh, finance report. So motion. motion. All right. Motion by Councilmember Stovall is second. I'll second. Second by uh, Councilmember Mullins. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. All right. Okay, folks, just a couple of uh, quick items under the uh, mayor section tonight. Uh, I want to, as per usual, thank our staff for continuing to uh, work hard and uh, especially uh, in preparation for some of the uh, inclement weather. I know it uh, takes a lot of extra effort and time and uh, all the schedules get uh, shifted around and everything, but uh, 
uh, our folks always do a great job. There's no doubt about it. And uh, that uh, is proving uh, to be the case again this winter. So uh, thank you for all those extra efforts. Um, also want to uh, congratulate uh, some folks in town. Uh, I understand that uh, Joe Goodpies had a, a great uh, soft opening. I did not get to attend. I plan to uh, go there just uh, as soon as I can. I, I'll let you guys that uh, got to attend that uh, give us a report on that. But just really exciting uh, to have Joe Goodpies open. And uh, also we want to uh, congratulate the folks at uh, our artwork for their uh, grand opening. Uh, I especially tonight uh, want to uh, thank Debbie Adams uh, for the great article she had in the event messenger. I believe it was entitled Vinton Under Construction. Uh, that was, uh, as per usual, well written, but also uh, uh, very informative. She certainly covered uh, a lot of uh, material. That was, uh, I tell you, it was exciting to read that article. So, uh, Debbie, thank you very much for that. And uh, I won't dwell on this, but since I mentioned uh, this particular item before, I will just briefly mention I was disappointed in the action taken by the General Assembly. But uh, as I say, I won't dwell on that. We've got uh, big and better things to worry about and uh, to accomplish here in the town. And of course, I'm referring to moving the elections from uh, May to November. As I say, I'm more excited about the good things that are going on in our town. And that's just something else uh, that we will handle as we always do. So uh, enough of that. And with that, we'll move on to uh, the council section tonight for any comments that they might have. Uh, tonight, I'll start with uh, Vice Mayor McCarty. You have anything further for us this evening? Uh, yes, sir. I too was unable to go to the Joe Good Pies um, opening and I missed that greatly. So looking forward to being able to go there. I did try to, uh, to call in an order and it was a, a pretty long wait, which I mentioned earlier, if you've got to wait, then that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That means we're busy. But um, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't get to make that, but I have heard very good things about it. So I'm looking forward to being able to go there. Um, earlier, I mentioned to Chief um, that I saw two police officers help and push a car um, off of the street earlier that was having some issues, and um, they pushed it over into the um, bank parking lot for the gentleman, and you just don't see that. I mean, they are good guys, and so that just made my heart, made my heart happy. I actually clapped, but I don't know that they saw me doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's great. It's great to live in Vinton. So um, really, that's all I have for today. All right. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I hope you didn't take the hands off the wheel too long when you were. No, not. they had me stopped. <laughs> they saw me coming and said, stop. <laughs> <laughs> they will watch out. We it's don't want fun. you to be around. Stop. <laughs> they know my yeah. car. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Well, thank you for that, Sabrina. So, uh, Council Member Lyles, do you have anything further to see me? Uh, just a couple of things, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I, we haven't met since we had inclement weather, and I, I do echo what you said about our public works department. We have a, an awesome staff down there. I always try to stay up um, and late and let it fall, and then I like to go out and, and ride in it and see, see what it looks like out and... Uh, <laughs> You know, see if I can go up the steep hills and stuff in four wheel drive. And you know, there's no, all of them are clear every time I go back. <laughs> so, um, however, I can go right across the line and there's all kinds of hills that I can climb. And stuff. Uh, but our town is always clear. And uh, I know that those gentlemen, uh, they work extremely hard throughout that um, and uh, with little breaks. So, hats off to them. It's an amazing town to live in. So, um, and then I, too, I was lucky to be able to attend the Joe Goodpie soft opening. It is uh, an amazing transformation of, you know, I grew up down at Benton Motors. So um, when I'm sitting in there eating, it was in the garage section of, you know, and I think I sat right over where the grease pit was. So and you can't tell it was even there. It's, uh, it's an amazing building and Dale and Seth and, and Greg Rhodes. 
has done an amazing job with that transformation. I can't wait to see what the, the front side and uh, the alley looks like once he's completed that. And uh, just one last comment. This is the second time this week um, that, uh, you know, you made the same mistake. Um, I'll just tell you a little quick story. I was running out. I was having a really good day and was going to, I was looking forward to, to my plans that day. And I was downtown Benton and walking around and a, a couple was there and they said, look, there's the councilman on Benton Town Council. And they said, oh, and they said, yes, yeah, the old guy with the beard. Um, his name is Mike Stovall. And I was like, I didn't say anything. I just kept walking. I immediately canceled my plans and went home and shaved. <laughs> <laughs> um, so oh, that's not that anymore. You should have taken that as one of the best compliments. You've ever had. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad you made the right decision, Keith. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, thank you for that. With that, I guess we better move on to Council Member Marlin. Do you have anything <laughs> further this evening? Uh, well, I, I wondered why Keith shaved all of a sudden one day. It was just overnight, and uh, he you do look way younger, so you know, either way, either way. And she um, just called, and she just called you old. Right I did not, I did no, 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 I did not. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm happy I was able to um go to Joe Good Pies and had some great company and saw some good people and had some good food, and very excited about that. Um, can't wait to go back. And if anyone is interested in being the citizen member of RV TV committee, like Susan said, it is great. Um, it's fun. It's very informative. Not what I thought it was going to be at all. It's so much better. Um, they have some exciting things going on and I know for a fact they will do a great job with the state of the town because I've seen their work and I've seen them in action and um, they rival uh, the local TV channels. Absolutely. So they'll do a great job. And it's good to see everybody again. It is good to see you. Thank you very much, Lord. And uh, speaking of old folks, uh, <laughs> remember Stovall. I got turn. a little age on me. I'll admit I got a little age on me, but I'm still pretty. You know, I mean, I got a little age, but I'm still pretty. Um, that's all that counts. Well, I, I too, I first off do want to take my hat off to, to, to that's right, that's all that counts, uh, to the town staff. I mean, you know, I was even thinking uh, back during uh, the snow and, and I saw them doing some things that the vice mayor, you know, eloquently talked about the police officers pushing the car out of the road, you know, it, it would be neat. I know we can't ever do it, but it'd be probably neat if we could have cameras on all these different vehicles, just truly to see what the town, the public works department and the staff of the town does for our citizens. And, you know, it, it is a great place. It is a great place to live. And, and they do, do, they do do a lot of great work. I too got to attend Joe's Good Pies. Once again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to pass out a compliment and I have to practice these compliments in front of a mirror three or four days in advance to tonight or to a council meeting so I can get it out good. But, you know, it was um, it was uh, interesting. Uh, council member uh, Mullins and, and Liles and I sit at the table, but um, but to still have a memory, which he, Mr. Uh, council member Liles does. But to sit there and listen to him talk about the history of being in the middle as a, as, as a young boy and, and Vinton Motors and the garage. And of course, Billy Vineyard's um, widow was there and, and his daughter and, and just listen to those people talk and, and really the buzz, you know, that's, that's going on in the town of Vinton. And I will tell you something that I thought was really encouraging. I had the opportunity the other day to meet, uh, Patsy and I meet one of the uh, waitresses at, uh, Big belly, big big bellies, and uh, you know she talked about some growing pains that they'd had in the beginning, but then talked about how you know they had some things that they were putting in that was new that really people were liking and those kind of things. So you know just that great buzz that we have, um, you know, going on in, in in the town and and so um, and then of course to see the transformation. So yeah, I mean that's it's just of course an exciting time. Yeah, sure is, sure is. Thank you very much for that, Council Member. 
Uh, so I would appreciate it. Yeah, a lot of good things going on. You're right, Mike. A lot of good things going on. And uh, I might just uh, briefly mention, you may have noticed I'm um, uh, a little stopped up. I had a little stopped up. And uh, that's the reaction from the uh, second COVID shot. I've gotten my second shot now. And uh, I just wanted to mention to everyone, I, I did have a slight reaction. This is about it. Maybe a little um, muscle aches, you know, but it's really no big thing. And so I would encourage any, anyone, everyone that's uh, considering it to uh, go ahead and take the shot because the reaction is, is no big thing at all. And certainly, certainly... Uh, uh, much better than uh, if you uh, had the COVID. So uh, I would encourage it, anyone uh, to take the shot. Um, and I'm just thankful that uh, that it's available. So is there anything else to come before council meeting this evening? If not, we will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for adjournment. Uh, all in favor, signify saying aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, uh, thank bye. you, folks. Yep. Thank you, folks, for a great meeting. God bless you.